let's move on to the last agent we're going to discuss uh, with the for you, Sven, and that's Ozanimov. Yeah, Ozanimov. Now, now it's uh, getting difficult to get a differentiation between <laughs> the different singles in one phosphate modulators because Ozanimov is also claiming to be very specific on S1P1 and S1P5 receptors, and and therefore the profile looks quite comparable to Symponimod, which we discussed uh, a minute ago. However, there have been several trials, phase two, phase three, showing that was, uh, in, in the phase two studies, um, radiance, it could be shown that Ozanimod um, reduces the activity on MRI uh, compared to placebo. And this was then the reason to continue with the phase three trial, the Zanbeam beam trial, a multicellular randomized uh, trial, phase three. And there they compared Ozanimod versus interferon beta 1A and they could show that if patients are treated at least 12 months, Ozanimod was well tolerated and uh, demonstrated a significantly lower relapse rate compared to interferon 1 beta. The safety profile seems to be as expected for um, this class of agents and the study was further uh, supported by a second phase three trial, the radiance part B trial where the patients were randomized and treated over 24 months. For Europe, I think the approval makes a difference. As mentioned before, we have this specific approval for Fingolimod and Siponimod, and so Ozanimod would be the first S1P modulator entering the market in, in our hands also for a first line therapy, so to speak. And the study was significant when it comes to MRI and annualized relapse rate. However, the effect on disease progression was not significant. And this started a whole discussion. My personal opinion to this is that even in the interferon beta 1A group, there was not much of a progression. And so I think concerning this secondary endpoint of the study, the study might be underpowered. So it has been approved in Europe as well as US? Not yet. Not yet. But you're hopeful they'll be approved for relapsing or admitting. Yeah. Yeah. And do you because think they'll be treated, you think they treated differently than Fingolimod because it won't have a first dose observation? Yeah, because maybe the safety profile is a bit in favor of Ozanimod because we don't have the first line observation and the study is uh, clearly targeting a cohort of early MS patients. It's recruiting relapsing remitting patients between 18 and 55, and they are starting with an EDSS between zero and five. So this is, in my opinion, a, a early RRMS cohort. Okay. But you are right. Maybe they have the idea that it should be approved comparable to Fingolimod or Symphonimod. This is not necessarily as discussed before based, based on the available data. So I'd be a surprise. <laughs> There's some nice, uh, there's some really nice MRI data that's come out from the phase three trial program of Azanamod. So one of the things that's concerned us has been that there didn't appear to be a reduction in disability progression. And I think that's probably because this is a tough endpoint to meet in, in patients with very early MS when you've got an active comparator. But what was impressive, I think, was some of the MRI data that, that, that came out of the phase three trial program where they, they looked at some pretty advanced MRI in particular, not just whole brain atrophy, but gray matter atrophy, which may be um, better correlated with um, later physical disability and particularly cognition and they showed an 80 plus uh, percent reduction in gray matter atrophy in the azanamod treated patients. So I, th I think this is potentially exciting. And in Europe, if this has a first line license, it'll be a, a particularly useful addition. Patricia, how are we going to decide which S1P1 to use or S1P to use? Well, it's very interesting. Ozanamod breaks down to two major metabolites that actually make up 88% of the active drug. Their half-life is 11 days. So this needs a washout of three months. It's a longer washout than fingolimod and way longer than saponamide. And I would really think, if you think about the S1P receptor modulators as a whole cohort, and you're going to choose one, I'd probably choose the one that maybe had a, an effect on neurodegeneration 
plus the relaxing form of MS. You'd have to give me a good argument to not choose that one. 